the ice books form a global language that is a language of place. One of the reasons for using the image of the book is because we learn from books and we can learn from the river. I do everything by hand on the ice books, so it takes a long time to carve them. But there's something very freeing about doing an ephemeral action. These are time-based sculptures. And as we watch this book float away, I think it's important for us to contemplate our own source and our deep connectedness to this river. It's a kind of knowledge that I hope people will understand about the importance of fresh water. This is my studio, outdoors. I work outside all the time. the seeds that form the language on the book, the paragraphs, the sentences, carry that idea of the importance of plants to a river. And I also work very closely with scientists. It's important to understand the scientific basis behind the specific seeds that I use to be sure that the seeds are native to the area so that we're not introducing anything that isn't native. The idea of the ice book started when I was invited to do a project along Boulder Creek in Boulder, Colorado. And their primary water source is Arapahoe Glacier. And Arapahoe Glacier is drastically melting, as are most glaciers around the world. So I kept trying to think, how can I make that visible? As an artist, how can I make that visible? So one of the ways, of course, which is very obvious, is to carve something out of ice and have it melt so that people can viscerally have a sense of that melting. But then at the same time, I wanted to embed something positive within that, which were the seeds. Rivers are alive. They're just as alive as you and me, each one of us. They have a mouth called a delta, a body called a watershed, and they have a circulatory system. Even glaciers have tongues. These glaciers are melting very rapidly. They are receding up mountainsides. This is the Nisqually Glacier on Mount Rainier. When that glacier recedes all the way up the mountain, what's going to happen to that Nisqually River? In order to make this visible, I carve books out of ice and embed them with native riparian seeds. These are time-based ephemeral sculptures. The seeds form an international ecological language, a restoration text, a language of the river. I carved the books into the form of an open or closed volume, embedded with native seeds after I've discussed this very closely with each specific riparian specialist, stream ecologist, and botanist to decide which are the best seeds. These books are then launched into rivers as an offering. The seeds float downstream so that the seeds can plant themselves. Now, what are, what are some of the things that plants do for our rivers?
Paragraphs of plants sequester carbon, mitigate floods and drought, pollinate other plants, disperse seeds, create soil regeneration and preservation, act as filters for pollutants and debris, supply leaf litter for food and habitat, promote aesthetic pleasure, hold the banks in place to slow erosion, and provide shelter and shade. The calligraphic sentences of seeds slide from the melting pages of the translucent volumes into the water to be carried to shore. So what we're doing is carving a block of ice into a book. And this particular one is an open book. So we're just starting, it's still primarily a block. What we'll do is carve all of this down to be the pages over here. And what I'm working on now is this middle section, like when a book is open. So this would be the middle part. The binding will be down here, and then the pages will go over like that. These projects could not occur without the collaborative effort of many people working together. Those who contribute to or participate in the ice book launches are from the local communities where I am honored to be invited. In this radically interconnected world, it becomes our collective responsibility to compassionately take care of each other and our environment. One important aspect of a community-based ethic is gifting. The participants have donated their time, energy, ideas, and enthusiasm to all of the ice book projects. So each person is presented with a gift related specifically to the river where we have been working together. Reciprocity, a thank you. Join the ice books now on a journey along rivers around the world.
village or the woods. And these are the pages. And this is the middle. Decker's Creek, West Virginia, is highly polluted with acid mine drainage. At this location, the pH level of the water drops from a healthy 7.7 to a dismal 4.2. Instead of seeds, we used limestone words because of its ability to neutralize acidity. On False Creek, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, krill was used instead of seeds to lure larger fish into the creek with the hopes of salmon returning. This is my home right here by the river. And I'm, and I'm willing to devote my life to protecting these areas. Mm -hmm.